Hello everyone, my name is Danny Kruger and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to DIY the Mercedes Blue Top Shift Solenoid upgrade on a 722.6 transmission. Behind me over here we're going to be working on a W208 chassis CLK, but this is going to be applicable on pretty much anything that's going to have the W5A580 code of the 722.6. That 580 is going to allude to the torque limit of the transmission. So that of course will include a host of Mercedes AMG models. It's also going to include a lot of SRT8 models from Chrysler, such as the Charger, Challenger, and Jeep, and even some Porsches. So we're going to get the car up in the air, and while we're in there swapping these solenoids in, we're going to do some other preventative maintenance items, including a conductor plate and the transmission torque converter uh, lockup solenoid. So follow along, we're going to show you how to DIY the upgrade as well as all of these supporting uh, maintenance items that you can do while you're inside with the valve body. So anytime you're going to be doing this upgrade, uh, you're obviously going to be, for the blue top solenoid, specifically looking for quicker and firmer shifts in your AMG model or even your Chrysler model. Uh, it is always recommended when you're upgrading these parts because we're increasing line pressure. Uh, you may want to seek a tune. A lot of the time, any of these performance tunes for these AMG models are actually going to require these blue top solenoids because of the pressure they do deliver. It's always a safe bet. Uh, this vehicle behind us is getting a standalone, so it'll have it adjusted manually, but it's always a good idea to get that done. Additionally, you can check online, search your specific model, as well as this blue top solenoid upgrade. This is kind of an idea that's been around for a long time. So if you're thinking about doing it, I guarantee someone else on the internet has considered it at some point. You can find a lot of information out there. So now that we know some of the parts we're going to be working with today, uh, let's hop right over into some of the tools and I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna need to get this job done. So out the gate, what we're going to need are a small pliable funnel or one that's capable of reaching the fill tube that's at the back of the engine, which is going to lead down in the transmission. We're going to need our 722.6 automatic transmission dipstick uh, available on fcpro.com. A couple of good flashlights, always a good idea. We're working underneath the car and it's going to be pretty tight in there. Brake clean to clean up all of the surrounding surfaces. Uh, it's going to be an oily job and a lot of surfaces that may not have been touched in years are going to be cleaned, prepped, and put back together. Uh, additionally, you're going to want a couple of smaller torque wrenches, three eighths and a quarter inch if you can get one, uh, if not the appropriate adapters, basically things that you trust at small increments. We're going to be doing a lot of torquing at 28 Newton meters and even four Newton meters. So definitely something that you would trust to do the job. Uh, a pick set is definitely a good idea, if not one a uh, good trusted pick with a less than 45 degree angle is going to be able to get the job done. A uh, quarter inch ratchet and a three eighths inch ratchet are also going to be needed. Some extensions, definitely a good idea, as well as a mirror on a stick if you can source one, uh, just to be able to see in some of the trickier angles. And then for sockets, we're going to need a seven millimeter, a T30, a T20, and a five millimeter hex. Some nice to haves on this job are going to be our CPA 7650. That is going to be the drainage tool that you would use to get all of the additional fluid out of your 722.6. Alternatively, if you don't have one of those, you can drain the torque converter as mentioned in one of our other videos. And a final nice to have is going to be a change of clothes because this job is a giant mess. It's hard to avoid and you're probably going to want them by the end of the video. You can let us know in the comments section below if you actually needed them or not. That being said, we're going to get the car up in the air and we're going to get started. All right, so now that we're under this W208, what we're going to start off by doing is we're gonna take a five millimeter uh, hex or Allen and get at this drain plug bolt on the transmission pan. Uh, transmission pan on these, unless it's been upgraded to an aluminum unit, it's gonna be black is the easiest way to tell that you're not working on your engine oil pan. Uh, we're gonna crack this guy loose. As a friendly reminder, Mercedes did call these transmissions full of lifetime fluid. A lot of the time, if you haven't serviced this transmission before, this drain plug can fight you. So go at it patiently. You don't want to strip it out because then you're going to have a much bigger mess on your hands than if you actually crack it loose properly. So first, I'm going to take our hex, see if this uh, drain plug right here is going to fight us. Oh, there it goes. So I'll just uh, try and avoid as much fluid here as possible. This has the potential to be a very messy job. Just position our pan in advance because I do not want to wear too much of this and we will let that drain for a minute. So the last of our trans fluids dripping out here, uh, as that's finishing up, I'm gonna go just around the perimeter of the pan with some brake clean and just kind of wipe right around the top of the pan 
This one's pretty dirty, and these transmissions, as mentioned earlier, are really robust. However, they are very prone to issues with contaminants. So we want to try and keep this job as clean as physically possible, especially when we're getting into the valve body here, uh, which will be happening as soon as we drop this pan. So I'm going to wipe this off, and then going around the perimeter of the pan, you'll see six T30 bolts. We're going to start cracking those loose. They do have a spacer uh, between the bolt head and uh, the bottom of the engine itself. Those are kind of specific to where on the pan they're located. So I would suggest as you take these off, put them somewhere where when you go to put them back on, you're going to remember exactly which corner of the pan they went onto. So just going uh, crisscross here, just to make sure we're evenly releasing pressure on the pan. Uh, eventually I will pull these out and kind of leave the two middle ones right here and here, just holding the pan upright. The reason for that being when this comes down, while we do have this drain port right here, it's going to drop a lot of fluid with it. We want to be able to drop this pan straight down if possible to keep from wearing as much of the fluid as we can. All right, so if you look uh, right up top of the bolt here, you can actually see there's a little relief cut into it. That's what's holding the pan on uh, in addition to the bolt. So this one being the back left, I'm just going to set it off to the side so I remember where exactly this one went. Then we will go around and do that for all of the rest. Down to the last bolt here. Uh, you're going to want to try and keep one hand on the bottom of the pan to keep pressure on it so that it doesn't drop while you're taking this one out. Not a particularly heavy pan. The conductor plate that we'll be getting to in a minute and the valve body assembly are a bit heavier, so that'll be a little bit more of a challenge. And then keep in mind, of course, once we do get this pan off, the valve body and conductor plate are going to continue to drip as well. So you're gonna to wanna to get your hands out of the way as quickly as possible. So we're just gonna drop this straight down and we'll just dump out the additional fluid. This is a good chance to check and see if you see any contaminants in the fluid in the bottom of the pan. This one looks perfect. We love to see it. Nice and clear red fluid. So we are going to take this pan. We're gonna reuse this. We're just going to add a new seal after we put our filter and everything back in. Uh, we're gonna reuse this though, so I'm gonna take it off to the side and clean it up. All right, so we have our pan out of the way here. The last little bit of fluid's dripping down. We're going to pull this filter loose. Again, be prepared, there's going to be fluid above this, so when you break the O-ring, it's going to drop a fair amount of fluid again. Just pull straight down on this to break the O-ring loose. And let that drain. All right, so we're going to grab our T30 once again to loosen up this bolt right next to the filter port. Uh, this one is going to be the bolt that holds on the adapter for our CTA 7650, the pressure inlet. Uh, they do provide you a bolt that will hold the tool on right here. I'm probably just going to reuse the Mercedes bolt here as it's just easier. But I will take this guy, loosen it up, thread in our adapter, and then hook up some air to it. And it does have a pressure regulating valve internal to the tool that is going to manage, I believe it's seven PSI that this will need to purge the system. All right, so there's our bolt out. I'm just gonna grab the CTA adapter. So I'm just going to press this adapter straight up into the hole. It's got an O-ring to seal. And then I'm going to thread our bolt back in to secure it. And I'm not gonna go nuts. I'm just gonna tighten that down so I know that the O-ring has sealed when we add pressure to it. Just finger tight should do. All right, so just gonna finish snugging this up and then we are going to clip on this final adapter that's also part of the 7650 kit. Uh, this right here is going to actually have the pressure regulating valve uh, that's going to maintain pressure. We do have air in house here, so I'm just gonna hook this guy up with my slippery hands. And then we'll grab some air and that's going to literally just press uh, the remaining fluid that's trapped inside of this valve body out of the, the last few holes and kind of purge the rest of the system. Again, these are really susceptible to contaminants, these transmissions. When you're doing a service like this, especially performance upgrade, you really want to try and get as much of the old fluid and contaminants out as possible so you can get as much new fresh fluid back in there. Just lower this down a little so we have some room to get the air hose in. Hook up our air to the bottom of the tool. There's, and there it goes. Okay, so as the, the last of the pressure is getting the last of the fluid out of the passages here, we are going to release our adapter the same way we put it in. 
just drop it straight down again and then we will start taking the bolts out of the uh, valve body up here and drop that straight down as well. So around the perimeter of our valve body here, we're going to have eight T30 bolts. We're going to have four right in back over here and then four up in front. Uh, I'm gonna loosen those up so that we can get the valve body out of the car. I'm just going to loosen them for now because we are going to have to uh, disconnect our 18, or sorry, 16 pin connector up at the front. But I'm just going to crack these loose. These may have never been out of the transmission before, and I'm going to go in a star pattern to try and evenly release the pressure if possible. All right, so we are going to pull our electrical connector off of the valve body here. So the way we're going to start off by doing that, you'll see there is a uh, white collar on this that you're going to want to move counterclockwise, which is going to unlock the actual, uh, the connector itself. It can be a little tricky to get your fingers in there. This car also has had some exhaust work done, which is not helping us here. But you're going to pull that effectively straight down towards the ground and you'll see it'll start to loosen the collar. There it goes. Okay, so you can hear it pop loose there. Now our plug will pull directly out. All right, coming at it from the other side just for a little bit more space. Pull down, there you go. You can see there's a little bit more room to play with in the play of this connector now. Spinning it counterclockwise. There we go. All right, so we have now unplugged our connector. This is actually a really, really good time. A very common issue with these cars is the O-ring that seals our connector up here to the conductor plate inside of the transmission the O-rings will start to fail and what'll happen is the car will begin to wick transmission fluid right up this harness, eventually up into the transmission controller and it can cause a ton of problems. So it's a really good time to take a look inside of this connector. See if you see any oily residue or signs that that may be happening. Uh, anyways, while we're doing this service, we're going to be replacing this connector as these issue prone ones with the, the bad seal are just problematic. We want to replace that regardless. But if you have been having problems and you do see fluid in here, it's a good idea to go into your cabin and check your transmission computer because it may have some transmission fluid on the circuit board. All right, so as we saw earlier, we got our connector out of the way of our pilot bushing. That's this connector right up here on the, uh, the side of the transmission. Inside of the pilot bushing, there is a seven millimeter bolt that's securing it to our conductor plate. Reminder, the conductor plate, which we'll be servicing in a little bit, is on top of this valve body. It has pins that go through that pilot bushing, so we're going to need to disconnect them so that we can actually slide this entire valve body down. So I'm going to stick my seven millimeter socket up in here. It's right in the center of the pilot bushing. I'm going to crack that guy loose. I think I'm actually going to abandon the extension here just to make my life a little bit easier, see if that'll work. And a good way, a good practice you can actually use while you're in here, if you have a little mirror or a mirror on a stick, very common tools, you can actually put it right up against the transmission here and you can locate that seven mil uh, bolt that's inside of the pilot bearing or the pilot bushing, sorry. So we are going to do that and just kind of locate. It should be dead center in the bushing, but sometimes it just makes it easier to get that seven mil socket on there. All right, felt it give a little bit. At this point, I'm just fighting the O-rings and my workspace size. <laughs> might go for a pick just to coax it out because again we are not reusing this conductor plate on this car. Going to just put a little bit of pressure on this guy. There she goes. All right. So as you can see this is actually pilot bushing right here. It is filthy and more importantly it's actually full of fluid. So this car may have been susceptible to that issue I was talking about earlier with the old uh, pilot pushing and the fluid waking up the harness. I'm gonna have to do a double check on that. But if so, it was very early because looking at the actual plug itself, there's almost no fluid. There's a little bit of residue. So you're gonna wanna make sure you get both of the O-rings out of that hole. Uh, it should be a lot easier once we get the valve body out of the car regardless, but you can reach your fingers up and see if you can grab it. All right, so as mentioned earlier, we're now going to crack loose the eight bolts going around the valve body itself four in front, four in back. I'm going to leave one relatively snug in both the front and the rear, uh, just in hopes of keeping this thing in place. 
as mentioned, this is very fragile and is also very prone to contamination. So I'd like to give myself a little bit of time to crack these bolts loose and then brace the valve body itself because it does weigh a little bit before I actually take it out of the car. So I'm going to be pulling these, putting them off in a safe place because obviously we're going to need these bolts shortly when we go to put this back in the car. So we've gotten the four bolts in front and the four bolts in the rear out. Uh, we're just going to remove the two that are holding on the shifter arm right here. And then our valve body should drop straight on down. These are also going to be 230s. All right, so we did remove uh, the shift arm out of the way. As you can see, I'm just pulling it down. So we have a little extra space to work with, but silly me, I did actually uh, miss one more T30 up here in front. So we're going to crack that guy loose and then our valve body and conductor plate should come right on down. Yep, so as you can see, this is moving freely now. I'm gonna brace with one hand. I might even go get an electric tool. This is a great time to use that. Uh, again, this is a pretty heavy valve body here, but I'm just going to continue to back this bolt out. And then we are going to drop down the valve body carefully, bring it over to a safe and clean spot over there, and we're going to start dismantling things. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so we now have our valve body and our conductor plate right in front of us here. Uh, before we actually start tearing into this and kind of talking a little bit about what we're going to be doing today, we're actually going to start to bleed our shift solenoids that we're putting in as well as our torque converter clutch lockup solenoid. Those are right over here. Uh, maybe a little superstitious of me, but I'm just going to put a little bit of clean fluid directly into this bucket, drop these guys in there and let them sit for a few minutes. You'll see little bubbles escape. Um, I mean, arguably these are going to get some pressure as soon as you start the car up, but I like to just make sure the system's lubricated before you pop them in. All right, so we're just going to drop the shift solenoids as well as the lockup solenoids straight in and they can go all the way in. And they are bubbling a little bit, so. While those are doing their thing, we are going to start to take apart the conductor plate on top of our valve body. First, we're going to take apart the conductor plate. So in terms of actually taking the conductor plate apart, we're going to start by removing both of these covers. They just clip in uh, nice and loosely, but they may be brittle, so you wanna be nice and gentle with them as you slide them upwards. All right, there's one, and just put them off to the side. This one's a little bit bigger. There we go, all right. So now that we have our covers off, we can actually see some of the actual meat and potatoes of the system here. So just kind of going around, I'll give you a quick little tour of the conductor plate. So over here, we're going to have one of our shift solenoids right over here. Uh, we're going to have our torque converter clutch lock up right here. And then on this side, we're going to have two more shift solenoids. And then you're going to see two presumably brown solenoids over here closest to where your uh, pilot bushing for the conductor plate was originally plugged in. So if these are brown, that means we're doing a good service today by putting the blue tops in. Uh, if they're already blue, you may want to double check the part numbers. Some late model AMG cars did get the blue solenoids from the factory. However, there is a part number split. You may still be gaining some performance by putting in the upgraded solenoids today. Ours are brown over here, so we're going to drop the blue ones in instead. It is a direct fit. We're not going to have to modify anything. They drop right in. Uh, we're going to hop on that. And additionally, we're going to kind of examine this conductor plate as well. Uh, this conductor plate coming out of the car today is actually fully functional. This car doesn't have any codes. However, a lot of the time when you do have problems with these, uh, what the issue is going to be is either one of these solenoids failing, which will give a pretty indicative code, or most commonly either damage or contamination to these guys right here. So on the valve body or the conductor plate rather itself, these are responsible for the speed sensing of the internals of the transmission. And this guy right over here is just a floater that lets it know the level of the transmission fluid. Uh, a lot of the time, if you do have a transmission issue, or even if it's just aging, you may have contamination on these speed sensors, or they may just be failing as is. That's going to cause your speed sensing codes. That may cause the car to be unable to shift gears. It's why a lot of the time with this transmission, if it starts acting up, you're usually going to want to go straight to the conductor plate. So this is going to be our two to three shift. This over here is going to be our three to four shift solenoid. And this is the one to two and the four to five. This is doing double duty over here. Uh, as mentioned, these are going to be the solenoids that we're replacing today. These are going to be uh, line pressure and shift pressure. The blue tops we're putting in, it doesn't matter which one goes where, they're both effectively doing the same duty. But once you take these brown ones out, you can usually see the difference between the blue and the brown. We'll show you up close. But these are your speed sensors, responsible for the, uh, the input speed. 
And then here's your floater right here as to how much fluid is in the, the transmission. All right, so we're going to crack the three T30s loose that are holding these solenoids in. As mentioned, uh, these are different, two different lengths, so you're gonna wanna try and keep this all straight in your head, whether you need to move them off to the side and kind of mock the pattern that we're doing here. Uh, additionally, these solenoids have to go back in the exact same place. So stay organized, take your time. Uh, they can be a little tricky to tell apart once you have them off of the car. So we're just going to crack these guys loose. And then if you are replacing the uh, conductor plate like we are today, you're going to have to take these off these bolts off and these brackets as well as the solenoids in order to get the actual conductor plate off of the valve body. So these are what are securing our conductor plate onto the valve body aside from a couple little plastic clips. Just loosening this bolt. All right, so it just comes off like one big bracket. I'm going to move it straight over to our new conductor plate that we're using today. And then these guys are literally just held in by some O-rings all the way around. So it just lifts straight out. Boop. And I'm going to transfer this shift solenoid over into the rough location. You can just put it alongside or on top of. I'm actually gonna to elect to put it alongside. And then I'm going to remove our torque converter lockup solenoid as well. That's the one closest to me on the top where there's only one bank. Uh, we are replacing this guy today, so if I want to throw this over my shoulder, I'm free to do so right now, but I'll be a little bit nicer to it than that. So, it's that right there. And then I'm going to do the same with our additional shift solenoids and then our line pressure solenoids over here. Again, these ones over here with the brown tops in this instance are the ones that we're going to be upgrading today with our blue top solenoids. Just like earlier, we're just going to pluck these out and I'm going to lay the shift solenoids right next to where they're going to live. And then the line pressure ones, again, these brown tops, are going to be tossed in favor of our upgrade blue solenoids. So I'm going to put them right next to our torque converter clutch lockup that we'll be abandoning today. They have done their service for an undisclosed amount of mileage, and they are no more. So we now are able to lift this right off the car. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, and then we will start getting into some of our valve body improvements. All right. So we do have our valve body and conductor plate ready to go here. So I'm just going to give it a quick spin. It still surprises me how heavy that is every time. <laughs> um, now that we have these bolts out that we're holding the solenoids in, this conductor plate's going to lift straight off. There's just a couple of little plastic clips you're gonna to wanna to be gentle with on the sides over here. Uh, again, besides these clips, the only thing that does hold this on is going to be those bolts that we're holding the solenoids in. So you're just gonna wanna gently work this off. Uh, again, we do have another conductor plate here, so I'm not too, too concerned today if I uh, do inflict a little bit of damage, but still gonna be nice to it. So this is our old conductor plate off. We now have just a bare valve body. So one of the services that I said we were, meant, or we were going to be doing today is going to be the overlap sleeves. So a common reason to replace the overlap sleeves is going to be flares in between shifts. So your one to two, your three to four. Uh, additionally, I mentioned we're doing the torque converter lockup solenoid. That's going to be most easily noticed in colder climates. You'll notice when you're accelerating in first gear, it'll almost feel like the car grabs second and be a really firm shift. That's actually just the torque converter locking up uh, in between first and second gear, and then it'll shift into second properly. So uh, we're going to be doing those overlap sleeves while we have the valve body stripped down here. So you're going to have these block off plates on different positions of the valve body. Uh, behind there, you're going to have a whole bunch of different things like the lockup springs. Uh, again, today we're just doing the overlap sleeves, but there's a lot of different rebuild kits you can buy for these conductor plates. One of the positives of this transmission being used in a bunch of American performance cars is there's a ton of upgrade parts and repair parts that you can kind of pick and choose from as a US Mercedes owner. Uh, today we're just doing the overlap sleeves as mentioned, but if you are having uh, symptoms, you can head to a bunch of different websites that can help you diagnose what upgrade kits may be able to fix your valve body. Or if you're just looking for maximum performance, sometimes you can just buy a built valve body from a bunch of different companies and let it rip. So I'm gonna crack these loose with my T20. This plate right here is going to reveal uh, one of our overlap sleeves right behind it. So I'll zip those off real quick and then we'll check back in. All right, so you can see we have these springs poking out. Uh, those are again, part of that uh, DIY service kit that you can buy. That's not what we're going to be dealing with today. What we will be dealing with is one of these overlap sleeves. So we have one right here. 
literally all you're going to do, you can kind of see this has a tiny spring in it, as well as a small uh, plasticky rubber bushing, and then the metal sleeve itself. You're just going to grab a pick, and as you'll see in a moment, we're just going to coax it out forward, and then we're going to swap in the updated unit. So I'm just going to coax the shift bushing out through this little relief in here. You can see it's sliding forward with the pick. Might be able to grab at it. There we go. All right. So this is our overlap sleeve. And as you're going to see, I'm now going to dismantle it. So we actually have this bushing, which we're retaining. And then we have this spring inside. These are going to stay with us. This sleeve is what we're getting rid of today. Um, you can actually, in the Sonax kit, they have measurements. You can check to make sure these springs are still good. They will break occasionally. Uh, in this instance, they're fine. Same thing with these, they're totally fine. Uh, but you can check just to make sure that they still have the same amount of stretch that they normally would from the factory. So we're going to save the uh, inset pieces and we're going to take our sleeve here, which if you look carefully, you can see is actually pretty heavily scored. So this is going to be the root of our issue here with the flares in between shifts. All this scoring just from age. All I'm going to do is dunk this little O-ring in our same clean transmission fluid. Slide it onto this sleeve gently. A little bit tricky with gloves sometimes. There we go. All right. So we're just working it up into our little relief here. Again, if we want to dunk a little clean fluid in there, and then I'm going to find a clean spot on this table and I'm just going to lay it down and just roll it. And all that's doing is making sure things are seated properly. We're getting even lubrication. I'm going to head back over to the spring and bushing that we are retaining. Slide them in exactly as we remove them so that the spring is facing outwards from our valve body. Then we are just going to pop this guy in. And you will see it'll just slide right in once we tighten down our plate. That simple. Or you could push it in like that. <laughs> cool. All right. So we're actually going to just take this sleeve, slap it right over the top, tighten it down. Uh, that'll take care of our two to three overlap sleeve. We do still have to do the one, two slash four, five shift uh, sleeve. That's just one that's doing that and also the uh, three, four. So one of those is going to be right at the back over here and the other one's going to be on the side of the lower portion of the valve body. It's going to be exactly the same practice. We're just going to head over to time-lapse here, but you'll see it's just releasing the same bolts, removing this plate, popping out the old uh, shift sleeve and then inserting the new one. So these plates on the sides of the valve body that we're going to be taking off to get to the overlap sleeves are held on by a bunch of T20 bolts. Uh, when we go to put these back on, the torque spec's going to be just four Newton meters. So now that we have all of our overlap sleeves positioned back in the valve body, the upgrade parts, we're going to take our conductor plate and put our solenoids back in, start securing everything down to go back up into the transmission. So I'm going to take this guy and as mentioned, this kind of just clips in. So we're going to be nice and gentle with it. Get things lined up. The main uh, method of holding this and securing it to the car is going to be the bolts that hold in the solenoids. So just going to get that clicked in. You can hear that nice little click. Get on this side. and good on that side, okay? Okay, so we have our torque converter clutch lockup solenoid here that's going to go closest to me. We're going to use these contact points right on the very obvious copper ones on the conductor plate. Just loosely push that in. There we go. And then it has an O-ring that seals. You don't have to push very hard. And then the bracket, of course, is going to hold it right on top. And we're going to return the same shift solenoid from the same position on the old valve body. Drop that right in as well. Throw our bracket bolt on. Just tighten that down finger tight for now. All right, and then we are going to keep on moving. We'll do our next two shift solenoids back in the same positions that they came in. And those also sit right down. And now we get to do our blue, so uh, blue tops. So this is the upgrade that we're doing, of course. Got these soaking. 
Doesn't matter which one goes in either of these last two spots. And they just pop right down and in. Making again a bit of a mess. It's just par for the course on this job, unfortunately. All right, and then we are going to add our brackets, which are of course securing the conductor plate to the valve body as well. Okay, so now that we have our solenoids in, we have our brackets down. These solenoids, the bracket is going to get torqued to eight Newton meters. So all this is torqued down, uh, and then we are going to grab our covers here and uh, throw them right back on top. And again, they just loosely clip in. And then we are going to head back underneath the car to reinstall our valve body and our new conductor plate along with our new shift solenoids. Okay, so we're back underneath the CLK here. We have our freshly rebuilt valve body as well as our conductor plate. And we're going to start off by getting the conductor plate and the valve body as one unit back up into the car underneath the transmission. So this is where we're going back to all those T30 bolts that we took out to drop the big conductor plate down. Uh, we're going to be, just like we did before in reverse, lifting this guy up. And I'm gonna grab a bolt off to the side here so that I can thread one of them in, just so I can kind of get a little assistance holding this thing. Uh, you wanna be nice and careful because your pilot bushing hole needs to be in the right spot. You also wanna make sure that your shifter selector on the side is in the right channel. And then you can hold it upright, grab a bolt, and just start threading one home to help hold this thing up there. And grab another one. Move around to the front just to be safe. And I'm just gonna do this all the way around just to make sure that uh, we're getting a little support before we torque them in a cross pattern. Okay, and now that we have these kind of loosely secured, we're going to do again the star pattern to tighten these evenly. And our torque spec for all of these T30 bolts is going to be eight Newton meters. So now we're going to be putting our brand new revised design pilot bushing back into our conductor plate. So you want to be really careful at this step. Uh, if you look right through here, you can actually see there's a bunch of little pinholes, which are supposed to accommodate specific pins on the new conductor plate that we just put in. If you bend these pins or break them, it's, I mean, you're going to have to drop the whole thing again to put in a new conductor plate. You're going to have communication issues. Uh, there are three almost triangular points inside of the pilot bushing that align perfectly with the same holes on the end of this guy. Uh, the fortunate part is, is Mercedes gives us two wider ones and one significantly more narrow one. So as long as you can look up inside and locate where those outer plastic tabs are, you should be able to orient this perfectly. And you don't really need to force it in. You just want to kind of get it in the right spot. Once you know you can see that you're not going to bend your pins, then you can push it on and let the O-ring seal. All right. So you can see I have all of my pins aligned. You can kind of see through those holes, I think. It's a little bit of a tight fit in there. Get my hand out of the way. Uh, those, as you can see, those pins could very easily get bent or tweaked if you don't get this right before trying to push it and let the O-ring seal. So you really want to take the time, take a minute. If you're working on jack stands, find the right angle for you to get your head up in there and make sure that you have things aligned pr properly before you push things and let them seat. So uh, it should be, I should have mentioned earlier, when you're seating this pilot bushing, definitely a good idea to make sure you lube the seals appropriately, otherwise there's no chance it's gonna to wanna to go in. Uh, just again, clean ATF, rub your finger around both of the O-rings and it'll slide right in as long as you have that orientation right. Uh, now, for the pilot bushing bolt, that seven millimeter that we were dealing with earlier, we're going to torque that to just two and a half Newton meters. Almost nothing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend overdoing that. It can actually withstand a fair amount more than that, but what you can do is end up breaking off the captured bolt in the conductor plate to the point where when you go to do this again in the future or whatever, uh, this is going to be near impossible to unthread from the now broken conductor plate. So be nice and gentle. We're just going to take our wiring loom, kind of snake it past our rather questionable exhaust setup we have going on here. And then we are going to 
gently coax it onto the plastic tabs that are on the edge of our pilot bushing. You'll see them when you go to put it on. Uh, but then what's kind of neat about this is as we rotate this clockwise, we'll know it's engaged properly when it starts actually sucking the connector towards the valve body. So ours is not quite situated, which gives us a minute to clock it appropriately. You can see we've got it situated the correct orientation. I can see the tabs popped in. Going to apply light pressure and just start rotating this clockwise. And as you can see, it's actually sucking the connector down and in. You can hear it click. It's now locked. So now we are going to take our filter, which is only held in with uh, an O-ring right, right around the mouth up here. So we're just going to put it in the exact same location and just going to press upwards firmly. So we're going to start by removing the old seal from our transmission pan. We're going to be replacing that with a brand new lovely one. We're going to first install the six bolts that go around with the, uh, the bushings. Those are going to be T30s. Uh, eight Newton meters torqued all the way around. We're going to do the cross pattern again. Uh, so we have these bolts loosely secured just to try and mitigate the amount of drips landing on the back of my head, etc. We're going to throw the drain plug back in. We have a fresh new gasket on here that is part of the kit that will be linked in the description of this video, which consists of everything you're going to need to do the conductor plate uh, really the only add-ons you're going to have for this service are going to be the blue top solenoids if you choose to do so and that's why you're watching this video as well as those overlap sleeves uh, that we installed while we had the valve body out of the car. All right and then our T30s going around the perimeter again those are going to be eight newton meters so we're going to snug those up in a star pattern evenly distribute the pressure these a little bit loose we have a clean seal on the pan. And now uh, the drain plug, as mentioned earlier, is going to be 20 Newton meters on that five millimeter hex. There we go. With that being done, uh, we are totally complete with the entirety of dropping the pan, removing the valve body, conductor plate, everything like that. All that's left to do is go back up top where we're going to fill the car with transmission fluid. Generally, when you use that CTA pressure bleeder or drain tool that we used earlier on, you're gonna to need to put roughly six to seven liters in there, but these transmissions, because they don't have a vent, are a little bit susceptible to overfilling. So you're gonna to wanna to slowly kind of work your way up to where you think the capacity is. We're going to use our Mercedes transmission dipstick tool that's available on fcpro.com and just kind of keep checking along the way. We do have a video already published on how to check your 722.6 transmission fluid level. Uh, that is going to walk you through essentially how to check it appropriately at correct temperatures, et cetera. And also in our 722.6 service video, we're going to show you the process of refilling the car incrementally as the car is coming up to temperature. So we are now under the hood with our M113 and our 722.6 you're going to put roughly seven liters of fluid back into the car. Uh, we're going to start with around four and a half, five here, check the level cold and see where we need to go. All right, so we've put about five liters into our 722.6. We're going to check the level for the first time. Car is still ice cold, so it's, we're expecting it to read kind of way off the charts. Uh, what we're effectively trying to do here is we've put in the five, five liters included in the kit. Uh, as we mentioned in our other video, a lot of the time when you use the CTA 7650 tool, because it is purging more fluid out of the car, you're going to usually need to put about seven liters back into the transmission. So we're going to check right now just to make sure we're roughly in line with where we want to be. We're expecting this to be very high because we haven't even started the car yet or cycled the gears. And yeah, it's close to the hot fill line, even though the car is ice cold, which tells us normally it would be overfilled. Um, in this instance, we're going to start the car up, cycle the gear a few times, and then check at the cold fill line once again. So we have cycled the car through park, reverse, neutral, drive, and back a like a couple of times just to kind of let the fluid circulate. So we're going to check again. We're again expecting this to be at our cold level because the car has very little temperature in it. That hot level is 80 degrees Celsius. And yes, it is a bit low. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to top it off. We're going to drive around the block for like 10 minutes or so gently, just letting everything properly get up to temperature. We're going to check the level again and top off as needed. 
As we kind of touched on earlier, you really don't want to overfill these transmissions because they can be a little temperamental. So take your time, add small increments. We do go over this in our, uh, our checking your level on your 722.6 video, but you're really going to want to do this safely and slowly effectively to make sure you're getting the best result and not causing any damage. Once you do have the correct fluid level, you are free to enjoy your blue top solenoids. You get firmer, quicker shifts. You've now overhauled pretty much everything else in the transmission and you're ready to go. All right, so we have checked the level after taking it for a brief drive. We are right on point. So we can pretty much consider this job done. Start putting the top of the engine back together and start cleaning up. There's a lot to clean up. It's just part of this job. It's a messy one. But after all uh, that we've kind of gotten into today, we can now kind of take solace in the fact that we're going to have the upgraded solenoids. So we're going to have firmer and quicker shifts, which will be great with this car's transmission tune. We also have that new conductor plate in there, uh, particularly important considering we don't know the mileage on the unit that came out of this car. We've got new fluid, we've got new filters, and we have that new torque converter lockup solenoid, as well as those overlap sleeves to prevent flares once the car is tuned. So this is going to be running tip top now. Uh, it's pretty exciting and it's one of the best parts of doing this job is the first drive afterwards when the car is relearning its shifts, etc., and you're kind of falling back in love with a transmission that can sometimes let you down. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to see more 722.6 content or anything with this M113 V8 right here in front of me that I have a lot of cleaning up to do on top of right now, feel free to let us know.